Welcome to Business Conversations with your host, business strategist, Clive Ennevar. Clive is joined by expert guests as they talk business behind the scenes to give you the tools and insights to support your growth, security, and serenity as you strive for your success. Welcome to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Ennevar. I am Clive Ennevar, business strategist, and we're having a conversation with Maddie Scar about how overcoming criticism can help you build a successful business. An entrepreneur in every sense of the word, Maddie used her passion for business and travel to discover a gap in the global market, leading her to found Tech Mask. Her diverse background in marketing, manufacturing and management have given Maddie unique insights into building a successful brand. As a result, Maddie has overseen consistent and continual growth with more and more people becoming conscious of protecting their health. Hello and welcome, Maddie. Hello, Clive. How are we? Absolutely top of the world, thank you, and delighted to have you here because I can see a tremendous conversation happening today, especially with recent events. This is true. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. (laughs) Pleasure. And let's go right back to the start, though. Tech Mask. What Mm -hmm. does Tech Mask indicate? And what on earth got you started? What was the spur? So Tech Mask actually stands for Total Environment Care Mask. And the reason why we came up with this name was because we were looking to produce a product that not just took care of your health, but the overall environment, whether it be visual, um, your your sense of happiness wearing it, making you feel better about wearing it. So it was trying to encompass the entire environment, not just the use of itself. Um, And how we started was in 2012, My father and I were traveling to Japan and we got off the flight or I got off the flight and I had picked up something from this flight, um, which is quite common for me and um, had this little cough or cold. We were in Japan at a time where face masks were regularly worn and um, I could immediately acknowledge the the benefit behind it. You know, they don't want to catch what I'm coughing and splattering and spreading around. So it makes absolute sense. But what didn't make sense to me was... Um, Tokyo being a fashion capital of the world, why these face masks were all just plain white. Um, you know, the, there are so many diverse and, and um, out-of-the-box col- uh, design fashions that have walked out of, of Tokyo. So you would just think that taking uh, uh, coordinating a mask with your outfit was something that was just a given, really. But um, it wasn't this in this case. So my dad and I were joking around and we said, look, why not put... George Clooney's face on there or Brad Pitt's face on there. And um, this little idea actually became a a business concept, which was taking a commodity and trying to turn it into a fashion accessory whilst keeping or maintaining the benefits that it offers. Damn good idea and uh, good on you for thinking of it. Thank you. So (laughs) here we are. We've picked up a bit of a cold or a sniffle or a cough or something. And out of that comes this idea to start a business. What did we do then? It was, so 2012, I must have been 21, 22 at the time. And this is a very foreign area to me. I was just working in admin at an aquatic center. It wasn't at the time. So it was something out of the ordinary. My dad had um, a been working in the fashion industry for over 30 years so I had been exposed to that but I think what um to start it was just research you know trying to see whether this is something that actually exists and if it doesn't how would I go about getting something like this made and that opened up a whole new array of questions from there um but definitely research is um what Research and development of what the product would be is what took most of its time, and that was a whole learning curve in itself. Amazing how that opens up all sorts of other questions, isn't it? You you find an answer, and in that answer, there's one, two, ten different questions. <laughs> it's, 
I know you just keep it and then before you know it there's just a book of questions and you just don't even know where to start and you're trying to find the right person to answer them you'll find that it's not just going to be answered by one one person you've got to go to various sources to to get what you want so um yeah but definitely asking the questions was what I found to be most helpful in the beginning and of course along the way these things tend to gather a pace in one direction or another. If we're finding answers that are blocking us, it tends to gather a pace to stop us rather quickly. Mm -hmm. But if we're finding answers that continue us on the path to proving that something will work, it, we tend to move more quickly as we move along. As you move more quickly, did you also notice that uh, people around you associated with you at, that you were telling your story to started to deliver criticism? Definitely. <laughs> I think um, reason being is the perception of a face mask before the current time. Um, there, there were certain, they were associated with, with certain areas. And so um, we couldn't really see past um, where the product was initially placed in, in our mind. So if I was having this discussion with Australians prior to coronavirus, um, face masks were usually just seen either in hospitals on surgeons or um, right throughout Asia. So the idea of bringing something like this to Australia um, was a bit hard for them to overcome or understand why. Um, initially, the if, if it was positive criticism, it would be, oh, that would do so well in Asia. Um, but it, the idea is actually to bring it here. <laughs> and um, that, that's where the criticism lied or the struggle took place. <laughs> Funny how we're so good at... Uh delivering a backhanded criticism by telling you something will work somewhere else, isn't it? I know. <laughs> so true. <laughs> In all these years, I've never quite worked out why we do it, but uh, we continue to do it. So undaunted by this criticism, you continued. How long did it take you from idea to actually having a product? Oh, felt like forever. It took, um, look, the concept have occurred in, in 2012 and we produced a product and actually launched it in an overseas market, being Japan, in 2015. So three years. Very good. And I'm pleased to see you took it to somewhere where it would uh, most likely be accepted. Yes. Mind you, though, if I was to do it all over again, I'd probably do it another way. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, that's a, a reasonably common thing that I hear. And, of course, I've had the benefit through the years of talking to people who've been in business for very short periods of time, very long periods of time, and none of them has, provided I've asked the right question, none of them has failed to provide me with the answer, I wish I knew when I started what I know now. So... Oh. <laughs> I Fairly couldn't common. agree more with that comment. <laughs> and, of course, uh, working out uh, what they know now compared to what they know then often takes time. But in putting together all of these plans, did you create a business plan? Yes. And I think it was helpful having a business plan so I could just sort all of my my thoughts in, in a document. It was all... Um, nicely collated so I could understand. When you um, come up with ideas, they t tend to be quite sporadic. And if you write them down in all these little bits of, pieces, little bits of paper and everywhere, um, you tend to lose focus. I think a business plan was something that was able to um, just keep me on track but also um, organise my thoughts um, in a necessary manner. And, of course, being able to organise your thoughts, you mentioned there it helped you keep focus because you would lose focus otherwise. Was it better for you to focus your attention to the plan so that you could prove this would work or this wouldn't work rather than go out in the big wide world and fall flat on your face if it didn't? Um, that definitely was an element, yes. I needed to... Um, it, it was The business plan definitely acted as... Um, as a, an example or a clear-cut um, 
solution as to whether or not this was something that was going to work. Um, you do couple that with external advice in the, the big wide world. But, um, but yeah, no, it definitely assisted in that area as well. Seven years on, how much has the business plan changed? Oh, dramatically. <laughs> it's changed so much. And I think um, allowing it to be flexible is, has certainly worked in our favour. I think having a structured business plan that doesn't allow for flexibility um, opens you up to many barriers. Um, so it, I guess my advice would be to continually revise your business plan, keeping in mind the external factors globally um, just to ensure that you can continue to maintain your, your business vision and strategy. Indeed, we've always got to have that vision. Now, along the way, you know, we're, our title today is Overcoming Criticism Can Help You Build a, a Successful Business. How did you take that criticism and turn it to help you build the business? Look, if I'm being honest, at first I took it quite personally. Um, I took it as a direct attack on myself. (laughs) 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 Thinking this is just way too hard. I'm going to close my shop. Um, But I think it allowed me to um, look at their perspective and provide a solution or ask questions as to why they may be um, coming from that perception or, or thinking that way and offering that advice and whether our product um, is, is something that I don't want to say prove them wrong, but I, I just it motivate. It's a motivation. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> so essentially, the criticism allowed you to look at it in a, a, an objective fashion. After we've got rid of the you know, immediate "how dare you attack me" <laughs> response, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we right. look at it uh, from an objective viewpoint. And that allowed you to see that, okay, this could be a criticism or a reason why people would be less likely to purchase. How do we overcome that? Is that how it worked out? Yeah, definitely. But it also allowed me to, um, so they say when you're developing a product that you need to work out specifically who your target market is. And this type of criticism is what um, definitely helped in that area. Um, aside from taking it personally, it made me realize, well, you are not my target market for these reasons. And it, I was able to refine exactly who my target market was. Excellent. So we really need to listen to the messages, whether they're coming in positively or negatively. Correct. And perhaps we better look at the positive ones in a different light so that it's not just all about our ego in case uh, people are not telling us quite the full story. (laughs) This is true. (laughs) This is very true. (laughs) Are you still looking for information which will help you change how you deliver your product, change who your market is, change the product to suit an alternative market, that style of thing? Absolutely. I think that that's something that you need. It's important to always be looking for these types of this type of information i mean as i said the world is ever changing more so now than ever and um as a result the needs of your customers are changing the market the, your initial target market is changing constantly due to external factors and so you always need to um keep an ear to the ground if that makes sense um trying to learn more information and then adapt accordingly to remain relevant and, of course, there are occasions in business when we come across circumstances that we haven't foreseen. For example, as you and I are uh, having this conversation, we are about uh, six, five or six weeks into lockdown because of coronavirus, or, uh, and that's a change that I doubt you saw coming. And what difference has it made in your life, in your business, apart from just being, okay, I'm locked at home now, I'm not travelling much. (laughs) Um, You're completely right. Definitely did not see this coming. Um, And the changes that we experienced was um, 
the use of a face mask or the product itself was brought to the forefront of people's minds, which resulted in um, drastic demand, both locally and, and globally. And so we had to, uh, as a result of this, we experienced demand from all sides, whether that be consumers and retailers, and it's trying to cope with the growth of that um, because it's happening so dra- as it happened so drastically, um, you you just kind of need to roll with it. You don't necessarily have the manpower or the systems in play at that point of time. Um, so it, it definitely impacted us there. But um, to satisfy this demand, we've been incredibly conscious of remaining loyal to our existing customers and trying to um, maintain those relationships there and continually liaising with our suppliers to um, ensure that we can meet consumer demand as best we can. And you mentioned suppliers, of course, they're a rather important part of the the chain because whilst the demand might um, first be seen at the retail level, which then puts a little bit extra demand on you, Mm -hmm. it flows back to your manufacturer who then has to go to their supplier and find in this circumstance, perhaps two, four, six, ten times or more, Mm -hmm. um, the raw material. How have you found that has affected your ability to provide your customers with the the end product? Well, there's been, there's no surprise that there's now a huge consumer demand for face masks, right? And that's resulting in a, a worldwide shortage, which has obviously had an effect on us. Um, what we've been mindful of is with future production, I mean, we're, we're conscious of the frontliners requiring these products um, more so than the rest of us. So we, we um, respect that and we are allowing them to produce. But it definitely um, does affect our production line, absolutely. And as a result, we've looked at slowly diversifying um, our products or the product offering into more of a hygiene space so we can continue to meet these demands that consumers have while um, respecting the the current global situation and and coping with the shortages that are um, evident at the moment. And, of course, you'll be required in these circumstances, I imagine, to make best estimates or best guesses as to how big the hump is going to be because we're going to have, uh, well, we're having, experiencing an enormous demand right now, Mm -hmm. but at some stage will that lessen off to perhaps larger than it was before but not as large as it is now? Look, I I believe that it'll slowly taper off. I don't think the demand, as COVID-19 comes to an end, hopefully, um, I'm... I'm certain the demand for face masks will start to to slow down, absolutely. I think that there will be more of a demand than there was prior to COVID-19, which will make masks more relevant. I think people are more conscious of the benefits behind them, and um, I think it's brought hygiene in general to the forefront of people's minds. So it'll definitely be in demand, but not to the extent that it is at the moment, in my personal opinion. And, of course, tick mask, total environment care. Correct. So it's, uh, if nothing else, COVID-19 might have alerted us that our environment might need a little more care. Well, absolutely. It, it's true. Um, and, and I think it's the, the overall environment, I mean, we were talking about this the other day about disposable face masks and the um, fact that we are producing so many of them and they're disposable, but it's also having a further impact on the environment in that regard, um, which is something we are also looking to overcome and actually have been prior to um, prior to COVID-19. It's something that we've been incorporating in our next production run. So it, you're right. It's definitely... Um, important to to pay attention to the impact on the total environment. So notwithstanding, you built a business which is going well, growing well, all the time you're looking at how can we care for the environment and make the whole thing better for all parties all the way through. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Whilst maintaining your vision. 
So, I mean, we, it, it's total environment care, absolutely. And what we're hoping to do is, uh, what our aim is, is to produce a product that is a fusion of both function and fashion. So, I mean, now you do see a lot of, given the current market, a lot of fashion designers coming out with stylish face masks. Um, that may not necessarily have the filtrational benefits that, you know, it, it's taking care of the, the fashion side of things. But for us, um, we don't want to lose sight of the importance of the functionality of the face mask. It is it's making sure that moving forward, that we keep that in mind as we continue to develop new products with the ever-changing environment. Keeping a, a good eye on the, the whole vision rather than just part of it. But let's let's go back to that fashion uh, mm-hmm. part uh, in deciding what you see as okay this will sell well are there specific things that you need to look at to identify this particular design or style um, again it comes down to your target market um, it, we had over 28 different designs and we were in different countries that at one stage and what was appealing in one country was not necessarily appealing in another country. Um, so it, it, you know, some people prefer subtlety. Some people prefer more bold and outspoken designs. Some people just like the fact that there are designs on them and it makes them feel better about wearing a face mask. I mean, there's one story that um, will always stay dear to me. It was a, a customer of ours who um, was purchasing for her sister and her sister had um, was suffering from or was undergoing chemotherapy. She was in stage four cancer, and she was buying these as a as a gift to make her feel better. And the feedback we were getting was that you know she actually she loved being able to put on our French blue face mask and coordinate it with her her outfit. And she went to the doctors that day, and the doctor complimented her. And so it, it comes back to the whole environment thing of making herself feel better whilst protecting your um your immune system, you know, she feels better and more confident wearing a face mask that, you know, uplifts her spirit, so to speak. Good work. Even even if the uh, functionality weren't there, at least that's a benefit. But uh, much better that you've incorporated the functionality with the good feelings. I think, yeah, it's important not to lose sight of what the product is there for in the first place. Like, why did we produce that product or why does it exist? You know, similar um, when people ask about the face masks, I used to compare it to shoes or bags. So shoes, for example, the benefit there was to protect your feet from, you know, the the other external environments, just to protect your feet when walking. But, you know, now they're available in various styles, various colours, various, you know, fabrics, etc. Same with bags. The purpose was to carry items from A to B and now they've continuing they've maintained their purpose, but it's now available across various styles and designs, etc. And I was hoping that the vision was to try and um, do the same for face masks. And good to hear that you've stayed true to that initial mission. So which of course brings us back to uh, our title, over, How Overcoming Criticism Can Help You Build a Successful Business. Even when you're successful, you're still receiving criticism. Always. Um, you know, but I welcome it now. I know I mentioned that I was um, quite <laughs> quite hurt by it. I actually welcome it. I think it, um, it highlights areas that, you know, if someone's has this perception will you ask the question why and if it's something that's going to um affect the business how can we improve on that you know um if for argument's sake the the face mask is too heavy on the face how can we improve on that if the face mask you know these aren't effective in blocking out x y and z how can we improve on that you know um it's it's our own form of market research rather than just taking it on board as criticism and my the brand's terrible, the product's never going to work, I should just shut shop now. <laughs> and even if it's not uh, delivered in this way, it's always constructive as long as you research it thoroughly. Exactly right. Which is a really good thing to keep researching 
uh, regardless of how well you're going and how well you're growing. But we're coming towards the end of our conversation now and, and we could carry on with this for a long time because you've got lots more information in there I haven't managed to get out of you. But time is against us. Before we let you go, what is the best tip you have received from a business conversation? Well, <laughs> I would have to say that a very wise man once told me that it's very important that you know two things about your product inside or about your business inside out. And that would be the product and the pride and you do not talk about it. That sounds like excellent advice. (laughs) (laughs) Maddie, what is the top piece of advice you would like to leave listeners with today? I think it's important to accept the fact that businesses have ebbs and flows. And if, something is not going in your favor, it doesn't mean it will never go in your favor. I think that um, welcoming those ebbs and flows is, is um, it was a hard lesson for me, but um, everyone experiences it. And the more you read about it, I think some of the biggest brands and um, most phenomenal businessmen and women in the world have experienced these ebbs and flows. But it's just, it all comes with building a business. Very good advice. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Most importantly, before we let you get away, Maddie, how can our listeners connect with you to start their own business conversation? Um, you're more than welcome to visit our website, www.techmask.com. There's a, a contact us page there where you could email us directly and I'm happy to review everything that comes through. And Techmask is T-E-C-M-A-S-K, Techmask. No fancy doodars in the middle of it. Tech mask stands for Total Environment Care Mask. Sure does. There you go. This has been a wonderful conversation, Maddie. Thank you so much for being here. And Thank you, Clive. And we'll be with you again shortly. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of Business Conversations with Clive Enova. Make sure you subscribe to future episodes via your favourite podcast app. And you can find more business resources at cliveenova.com.au.